In this video, we will discuss Civil 3D workspaces. If you would like to follow along with this video, please open the file 0201 civil 3 workspacesdwg located in the training folder discussed in the Working with this Dataset video. Civil 3D ships with predefined workspaces that help you use Civil 3D more effectively. To switch between workspaces, navigate to the Workspace Switching icon located in the lower left part of the AutoCAD Civil 3D application window. There are four workspaces that ship with Civil 3D, which contain the Civil 3D tools, as well as some of the standard AutoCAD tools, 2D drafting and annotation, which is just the standard AutoCAD out of the box tools, 3D modeling, which is also the standard AutoCAD tools related to 3D modeling, and the planning and analysis tools, which are useful for connecting and using geospatial data. When you switch to a workspace, for those of you that don't know, a workspace is simply a stored configuration of all the available interface components in AutoCAD. As you can see here, when I switch to the planning and analysis workspace, I have a different set of tabs as well as tools that are associated to the workspace that I selected. Also notice that my tool palette and properties palette, as well as my command line window, look a little bit different as well. This is because the workspace is storing the location and configuration of these palettes. It is recommended to save your own Civil 3D workspace so that you can always revert back to it should something go wrong with your workspace. I'm going to make my Civil 3D workspace the active workspace as we will be using this one throughout the course. As of this video, the tool space has been closing automatically. Simply navigate to the Home tab, Palettes panel, and toggle on the tool space. Once you save your workspace and exit AutoCAD Civil 3D, the tool space will remain open. To save your own workspace, simply navigate to the workspace switching icon and select the Save Current As option in the shortcut menu that appears. I will give it something like Civil 3D and my name and click the Save button. Another recommended setting to turn on is the workspace switching setting. Navigate to the Workspace Switching icon and select the Workspace Settings option in the shortcut menu. In the When Switching Workspaces section, there are two options. By default, it is set to Do Not Save Changes to Workspace. What this means is that as you make changes to any of the interface components, none of your changes will be saved and when you open up AutoCAD Civil 3D again, it will revert back to the original saved configuration. So, it is recommended to actually set this to automatically save workspace changes. That way, any changes you make to your interface components will automatically be saved. And when you exit AutoCAD Civil 3D, they will be there for you automatically. This concludes this video on Civil 3D workspaces. In this video, we will be discussing the Civil 3D ribbon. If you would like to follow along with the video, please open the file 0202thecivil3dribbon.dwg located in the training folder discussed in the Working with this Dataset video. The ribbon is a standard Microsoft interface that Autodesk adopted in AutoCAD 2009. However, Civil 3D started using it in 2010 as the main interface to all the Civil 3D tools. The ribbon is made up of tabs and panels. For instance, we have the Home tab, Insert tab, Annotate tab, and so on. And within each of these tabs, you have panels that are associated to the category that you select. So, if I were to state, go to the Annotate tab, Label and Tables panel, Add Labels tool, this is how you would navigate to it. So, what is the ribbon and why did they go to this type of interface? Well, the ribbon interface is a task-based interface, which means what you need to do is ask yourself, what do I need to do and where would that be in the ribbon? The exception to this question is the Home tab, which contains the most commonly used tools, which will make it the most widely used ribbon tab. So, let's say I want to plot. So let's think about what plotting is. Plotting is an output type operation. So looking at the tabs, you would simply navigate to the Output tab, Plot Panel, and here are all your plotting tools. Note, in the Output tab, there are also additional quote-unquote output actions 
like creating view frames or sheets for plan production, or exporting points or other types of Civil 3D data into different types of formats. So that's how you have to look at the ribbon when you're looking for a tool that you need to find. Well, what about creating Civil 3D data? So if I go to the Home tab, as I mentioned before, this will be the one-stop shop location for the most commonly used tools. You would simply look to the Create Ground Data, Create Design Tools, etc. panels to find the object type that you are interested in creating. For instance, let's say I wanted to create an alignment. I would go to the Home tab, Create Design Panel, Alignment Tool, and simply select the alignment type that I would like to create. Sometimes a tool that is not most commonly used will still be in the correct panel. If you look at the little arrow that is pointing down below here for each one of these, these contain the not so most commonly used tools in this specific category. For instance, the Create Design panel. When I expand that, you will notice some of the non-standard types of ways of creating different objects, and I can select any one of those tools. Move away from that and notice that it disappears. One of the other functionalities of the Civil 3D ribbon is that it is context sensitive. And what that means is that when you select a specific object type, the ribbon will update with object specific tools. For instance, I'm going to zoom in here and select this alignment. When I select this alignment, notice the ribbon updates automatically with a context sensitive ribbon that contains alignment specific tools. For instance, looking at the alignment properties, editing the alignment, super elevation, etc. Also note that the ribbon will update with the name of the object that you have selected. Let's look at another example. I'm going to hit escape to clear my selection set. I'm going to select this surface that's in my file. When I select the surface, it updates with the tin surface EG, which is the name of the surface, surface specific commands. So, knowing how AutoCAD Civil 3D uses and leverages the ribbon can really help you be more productive and more efficient. This concludes this video on discussing the Civil 3D ribbon. In this video, we will be discussing the Toolspace Prospector tab. If you would like to follow along with the video, please open the file 0203toolspace-prospector.dwg located in the training folder discussed in the Working with this Dataset video. The Toolspace window is where the Prospector, Settings, Survey, and Toolbox tabs reside. The Prospector tab, which will be the main discussion of this video, is where you manage the Civil 3D design objects that are in your drawing. While going through this video, it is important to note the way that each category in the Prospector tab works. Each category and subcategory has context-sensitive menus that make the creation, editing, and viewing of that data very easy. Let's go ahead and expand the Surfaces category, and notice that there's already a surface called EG, which stands for Existing Ground. Notice that as I keep expanding the different subcategories within the EG surface, I can see all the data that was used to define this surface. For example, if I go ahead and expand the break lines category, you'll notice I have two subcategories that show how this surface was created. I have one called existing 3D break lines and one called existing center line. Notice that as I select the category existing 3D break lines, the sub entities within the category appear below. If I right click on any one of these objects, you will notice you have a nice set of tools that will allow you to see that sub object. Let's go ahead and take a look at another object within the file. I'm going to expand the alignments category and notice that there are other subcategories related to alignments. I'll expand the centerline alignments and notice that there is an existing alignment located in this file. If I right click on this main category, notice how I can actually select this alignment right from that context menu. What's great about this functionality is if your file is very congested with many Civil 3D objects, you can simply use the Toolspace Prospector tab to select the object and the context sensitive ribbon allows you to make any edits or modifications to that object. Notice that as I expand the existing alignment, you will notice the objects that are also dependent on that object. For instance, the profile and profile view. Again, if I wanted to simply zoom to this location, I could right click on it, 
select Zoom 2 from the context menu, and just like that, I am now presented with that location in the drawing. Let's talk about the Civil 3D icons that enhance your design session by giving you quick visual feedback of the state of objects and even styles within your drawing. The state icons, as they are called, will give you some visual feedback as to any relations that that object may have with other objects. For instance, this state icon right here is telling you that it is being used by something else in the drawing. As I peruse through my prospector tab, I notice that there is a corridor object. To create a corridor object, as will be discussed later on in future videos, you need an alignment, a profile, and an assembly. So this alignment is being used by that corridor and cannot be deleted. If I right click on here, you will notice that there is no delete option. Some additional state icons are that the object in question is out of date. For instance, let's go ahead and change the horizontal alignment in this drawing. And as I do so, you will notice that an icon appears next to the corridor model. This is telling you that this object is out of date and needs to be rebuilt. Again, as mentioned before, simply right click on the corridor object in the prospector tab and select the rebuild option. The icon will disappear, telling you that the Civil 3D object is current. There are many shortcut menus that you can use within the prospector tab that really help you with creating, editing, and viewing the specific data that you right click on. This concludes this video discussing the Toolspace Prospector tab. In this video, we will discuss the Toolspace Settings tab. If you'd like to follow along with the video, please open the file 0204 Toolspace Settings.dwg located in the training folder discussed in the Working with this Dataset video. The Toolspace window is where the Prospector, Settings, Survey, and Toolbox tab reside. Civil 3D uses styles and settings to automate CAD standards and design settings within the Civil 3D environment. Civil 3D styles and settings are probably the most important aspect of Civil 3D. Having a good set of styles and settings defined before using Civil 3D in production will make it a lot easier for you to use it within your organization. Also, Civil 3D styles and settings are stored in a drawing template, an AutoCAD file with a .dwt extension, which makes it very easy for you to maintain your CAD standards or use Civil 3D with another client's standards. Civil 3D uses two types of styles, object styles and label styles. Object styles are associated to every Civil 3D object, such as surfaces, alignments, or parcels, and so on, and label styles are associated to the annotation of those objects for general Civil 3D labels. Let's go ahead and look at some of the object styles in Civil 3D and how they control the different Civil 3D objects. Object styles are edited through the Object Styles dialog box. Each Civil 3D object will have a setting that pertains specifically to that design object. For instance, in this file I have a surface, an alignment, a profile, and a corridor. Let's go ahead and take a look at the surface style that's associated to this object. Before looking at the style, I am always asked what is the best way to navigate through the styles? So in the settings tab, which I have active right here, you'll notice that all of the settings and styles are categorized by design object, which make navigation to a specific style or setting very easy. For instance, as we mentioned before, this surface is using a specific style. So let's go ahead and select this surface first. And if we look at the context sensitive ribbon, we have a few surface specific tools available to us. And let's go ahead and go to the surface properties. Within the surface properties, you'll notice that we can actually see what style this is using. So right here, I can actually go ahead and click this button to edit it, but let's go ahead and navigate to it from the settings tab. So in the settings tab, I'll navigate to the surface category and notice how we have subcategories for surface styles, label styles, table styles, and commands. If I expand the Surface Styles category, you will notice that these are all the styles in this drawing. Notice the little shortcut icon that is telling you it is being used somewhere throughout the drawing. This could be in another style, another setting, or within the drawing itself. As we looked before, we saw that the contours 1 foot and 5 foot background were being used by this surface. So, one thing I always say when it comes to the interface, when in doubt, right click. So, right click on that style and select Edit from the context menu. So, the Surface Style dialog box contains different tabs, and each style dialog box will contain unique tabs, and we will discuss this when we talk about alignments. 
So this is a surface tile, so we'll have tabs that are pertinent to a surface object, like the borders tab, the contours tab, and so on. Well, let's go ahead and decide that we actually want to turn the points on for this style. So we want to see the points as well as the contours. This would not be mistaken with civil 3D points. These are the points that are contained in the surface. I'll go ahead and toggle on the visible state here. And you'll also notice that you can set the different layers and properties for the subcomponents within the Civil 3D object. Also important to note is the view direction category. So when you rotate a view, AutoCAD Civil 3D has the ability to display Civil 3D objects in a different way based on the rotation of your view. If you look in the model view direction, this surface style will only display the triangles of this surface. In a section view, which would be like the existing ground and so on, it's going to actually display a section line with the color of red on layer zero. Let's change this back to plan, make sure we have points turned on, and I'll simply click apply, and what you'll notice is that all the points have now been added to that surface style. So the surface style, again, controls exactly what is displayed for that specific object. I'm going to go ahead and turn this back off and click OK, and we're back to the one and five contours. Let me go ahead and hit escape. Let's go ahead and look at an alignment style. So I'm going to zoom into my drawing. I'll select my alignment here. And another way that you can actually access the style is to simply right click right from the AutoCAD drawing view. And you'll see this edit style. In this case, it's an alignment right from the context menu. Again, notice how we have specific tabs related to the Civil 3D object that we actually selected. So this is an alignment. And we can change the different aspects of how that Civil 3D object is displayed. For instance, let's say we want to turn on the directional arrow for this alignment. I'll go ahead and toggle that on. I'll click OK. And now you'll see that you can actually see the direction for that arrow. Let's talk about Civil 3D label styles. So label styles are edited through something called the Label Style Composer dialog box, along with the Text Component Editor dialog box. And every Civil 3D label uses these dialog boxes for editing. So I'm going to zoom into my contours and notice that I have some contour labels displayed. Well, let's say we want to actually change this label style because it's actually using too much of a precision. So we actually want to get rid of the decimals. So one way to do this is to simply select this and notice how this contour label line, that's the type of object this is, appears. And I can go to the properties palette and notice how I can actually see what style is being used by this surface contour label. So existing major label is the one right there. And I could click the drop down here and edit it in this way. Or as I mentioned before, we can navigate through it in the settings tab. And then notice how it's nicely categorized under label styles, contour. And then notice how we have the two label styles being used in this drawing. Again, the nice little orange shortcut there tells you that it is actually being used by some setting or object within the drawing. So let's go ahead and select that. Again, right click and edit. And here is the Label Style Composer dialog box. It consists of five tabs, information for the name and so on, the general tab which contains what layer and the orientation of the text, and the layout tab is the one that we're interested in. So this one here is where you can actually tell it how to display the label and what design information you actually want to display. So if I look at the contents parameters here, I can click on here and then click this little ellipsis button to browse into the text component editor. So once you get used to these two dialog boxes, the same two dialog boxes are used for every single label style. The only thing that's different is the properties that are displayed based on the type of label style that you actually select. So in this case, this is showing the surface elevation because it's a contour label style. So to make changes to this, I actually want to select it right there. Notice how this updates with the properties being used here. And I want to change this to have a precision of nothing. Now you might have a tendency to just simply click the OK button. But don't forget, this is crucial to making sure the label style is updated. Click the arrow here to update the style with the settings that you've defined here. You always have to do that. In fact, if I wanted to add any other properties, I would simply select them and then click the arrow to add them into the text component editor label style. I'll click OK. And here's the great thing about Civil 3D. This is what's wonderful about this dynamic nature. If I click OK now, every single label that's using that label style will automatically update in the drawing.
Let's talk about settings. The settings for Civil 3D have a top to down hierarchy level. What this means is that settings are defined in the main design object category and they will trickle down into the subcategories as well as into the commands themselves within the subcategories. The ones above will try to override the ones below, but the ones below always win. And what I mean by that is there are three types of settings. You have drawing settings, which are global for the entire drawing. You have feature settings, which are specific to the feature, but will initially grab the settings defined by the drawing settings. And then you have command settings. So each command has its own set of settings that allow you to then completely override any of the settings defined above and those settings will be used by the commands themselves. So to get to the drawing settings, you right click on the file name and go to edit drawing settings. The drawing settings dialog box contains five tabs. The first tab is the units and zone tab, which is used to define drawing and angular units, plot scale, and the coordinate system for the active drawing. The transformation tab is used to transform the coordinate system defined in the units and zone tab. If you do not specify coordinate system, then the transformation tab will be grayed out. The object layers tab is used to define layers for all the Civil 3D objects as they are created in your drawing. You can equate Civil 3D objects as they are created to blocks. The object layers tab is used to place those Civil 3D objects on this layer initially and then any of the subcomponents are defined by the actual object style. However, this is a pretty powerful functionality because what it allows you to do is it allows you to actually define the specific layer that the object should go on and you can define these prefixes or suffixes that will append or prepend the name of the object to the layer defined here allowing the entire object to go on a specific layer. Again, this enables you to freeze or turn off the layer very easily. The abbreviations tab is for geometric type information. So things like PC, PT, etc. Note that these can also be overridden by some label styles as well. The ambient settings is the overall settings throughout the entire design file. If I click the expand all button here, you'll notice that I have uh, categories such as labeling, unitless, distance, for instance, I tell it what unit I want to display, and the precision I want to display in the command line. One thing to note, you'll see this child override column that's very common for all the different settings. And what that's telling you right there is that it's being overridden somewhere down the line. Again, there are three levels of settings in Civil 3D. So somewhere down the line, it's being overridden. Let's go ahead and look at feature settings. So if I right click on a feature category, I can go to the edit feature settings. And notice how this looks very similar to the ambient settings. However, you have some feature specific settings like the default style to use when you create AutoCAD Civil 3D objects. So this is the default style that will be used what's the default name, and so on. So that's a very nice way to standardize how Civil 3D will use the different types of object styles and label styles. Lastly, you can get right down to the nitty gritty command so that if you want to override a specific setting within the command itself, for instance, let's say adding surface contours. I can right click on this, go to edit command settings, and I can actually tell it the different settings here that I want to override as well as you'll have some command settings. Notice the icon there that tells you this is specific to this command here. When you add surface contours, you are prompted for these settings and you can tell AutoCAD Civil 3D what the default settings for this command should be. Not every command has its own set of command settings, but the majority of them do and here is where you change them. Let's go ahead and talk about label style defaults. If I right click back up here, I can actually edit the label style defaults that are used for all labels in the drawing. Notice how every single one of these settings is being overridden, which makes sense because every property, whether it's a point label style, a surface label style, most probably will be different depending on what you are labeling. That said, if you have the need to override every single setting in the drawing with a specific, let's say, layer or style, you can actually do that right here. I simply click over here once, notice how the X appears. If I were to click OK right now, every setting would be overridden with the setting defined here. So I could put all my labels on a specific layer or use a specific style. Lastly, let's talk about importing styles. So let's say you have the need to import some styles from a different DWT or DWG file. In the Manage tab, Styles panel, you have the ability to import styles from different DWG files. Let me go ahead and save my file first. I'll go to import 
and I can navigate to a specific DWT drawing template or DWG file to grab specific settings or styles. This will show or display the different styles and settings and you'll have a few of these really cool little toggles to toggle everything off and toggle all the settings off and so on and I can just bring in maybe the settings and some styles for a specific entity that I wanted. I would click OK and it would bring in those styles. What's also nice is the ability to purge out styles because AutoCAD Simple 3D will store all the object styles that are being used and not being used in your DWG file. So if you do not want all those styles in your file, you can simply purge them out and then you will no longer have access to them, hence the reason you want to have a DWT file to always be able to go back to. This concludes this video discussing the tool space settings tab. In this video, we will discuss the Toolspace Survey tab. If you would like to follow along with this video, please open the file 0205 toolspace surveydwg located in the training folder discussed in the Working with this Dataset video. In addition to this file, which I will discuss when I open up Civil 3D for the survey database to be accessed. The Toolspace window is where the Prospector, Settings, Survey, and Toolbox tab reside. Let's examine the Survey tab. The Survey tab is where you define survey-specific settings that will be used by your survey databases. The Survey Database is a standalone file that can interact with your drawing, yet can be stored in a secure location so that only surveyors will have access to it. If you would like to work with this file, as I talk about it in the video, let's talk about the setting where your Survey Databases is located. To access the working folder for Survey Databases, right click on the Survey Databases collection and click on Set Working Folder. Before setting your working folder to the working folder for the dataset, make sure you make note of the location of your working folder should it be different than C colon Civil 3D projects. Once you've written down that location, set your working folders to C colon Civil 3D projects and click OK. So let's go ahead and open up the Learning AutoCAD Civil 3D Infinite Skills Survey Completed Database. To open a database, simply right click. In fact, any functionality within the Survey tab is accessed with the right click menu. I'll select Open for Edit. And in here we have our survey database. We will discuss in greater detail the survey database functionality in a future video. For now, just as an overview, let's go ahead and just examine what we have in this survey database. Any interaction that can be done with the drawing is simply a right click or a drag functionality. I can right click and select Insert into Drawing, and that will insert my figures from this survey database into the drawing. I can also simply drag, so I will select my survey points and drag my survey points into this file as well. Also note, there are many settings and styles related to the survey functionality that we will also discuss as well. Note below here in the survey tab, there are some additional databases and functionalities you need to be aware of. The Equipment Database helps you when you need to do least squares analysis. The Figure Prefix Databases help you automate your line work in CAD. And the line work code sets are useful for leveraging any of the survey coding that a surveyor may have done when bringing in the figures into your file. This concludes this video discussing the Toolspace Survey tab. In this video, we will discuss the Toolspace Survey tab. If you would like to follow along with this video, please open the file 0205 toolspace surveydwg located in the training folder discussed in the Working with this Dataset video. In addition to this file, which I will discuss when I open up Civil 3D for the survey database to be accessed. The Toolspace window is where the Prospector, Settings, Survey, and Toolbox tab reside. Let's examine the Survey tab. The Survey tab is where you define survey-specific settings that will be used by your survey databases. The Survey Database is a standalone file that can interact with your drawing, yet can be stored in a secure location so that only surveyors will have access to it. If you would like to work with this file, as I talk about it in the video, let's talk about the setting where your Survey Databases is located. To access the working folder for Survey Databases, right-click on the Survey Databases collection and click on Set Working Folder. 
Before setting your working folder to the working folder for the data set, make sure you make note of the location of your working folder should it be different than C colon civil 3D projects. Once you've written down that location, set your working folders to C colon civil 3D projects and click OK. So let's go ahead and open up the Learning AutoCAD Civil 3D Infinite Skills Survey Completed Database. To open a database, simply right click. In fact, any functionality within the Survey tab is accessed with the right click menu. I'll select Open for Edit. And in here we have our Survey Database. We will discuss in greater detail the Survey Database functionality in a future video. For now, just as an overview, let's go ahead and just examine what we have in this Survey Database. Any interaction that can be done with the drawing is simply a right click or a drag functionality. I can right click and select insert into drawing and that will insert my figures from this survey database into the drawing. I can also simply drag so I will select my survey points and drag my survey points into this file as well. Also note there are many settings and styles related to the survey functionality that we will also discuss as well. Note below here in the survey tab there are some additional databases and functionalities you need to be aware of. The equipment database helps you when you need to do least squares analysis. The figure prefix databases help you automate your line work in CAD. And the line work code sets are useful for leveraging any of the survey coding that a survey may have done when bringing in the figures into your file. This concludes this video discussing the Toolspace Survey tab. In this video, we will be discussing the Toolspace and Toolbox tab. If you would like to follow along with the video, please open the file 0206 toolspace toolboxdwg located in the training folder discussed in the Working with This Dataset video. The Toolspace window is where the Prospector Settings, Survey, and Toolbox tabs reside. We will examine the Toolbox tab. The Toolbox tab is where you do any kind of reporting on civil 3D objects. For instance, as you note here, I've expanded the Reports Manager category and we have the Alignment, Quarter, Parcel and other Civil 3D objects that you can report on. Let's go ahead and look at a simple report such as the Alignment Curve Report. To access any reporting within the Reports Manager, simply double click and that will open up the appropriate dialog box. In this case, I am creating an XML report. I can use the Pick From Drawing button here to navigate in my file if I have many Civil 3D objects that I do not want to have to peruse through in that dialog box. I can select my alignment, click OK, and then give it a name for that HTML file. Notice a simple report that appears in the format that you would expect, and I can save this to my project folder by copying and pasting it into Word or right clicking here and doing a save as. Notice that the company name and address are not defined properly. Let's go ahead and discuss where this is located. In the Toolspace Toolbox tab, we have the Report Settings button that we can click on and expanding the different categories here, we can go ahead and add in our contact name, company name, address and so on. Also note many of the settings for the different reports can be defined in here as well. Let's look at another really cool report available in the Toolbox tab. I will expand the Quarter category. And in my file, I already have a corridor object with a surface created, and I want to create a slope stake report. So I'll double click on here. This will open up a dialog box. This is not like the XML reporting. This is actually a program that is running that was developed by Autodesk. I want to add in the corridor link that I want to create a slope stake for. So in this case, we'll use datum, and I have a material list to grab any kind of quantities that I want. I will add in that datum and click on the create report. And what gets created is a really cool visual type report where I can actually see the different parts that it is reporting on for the slope staking. You can now take this out into the field, print this out for any of surveyors who might need it, and so on. There are many other reports available through the Toolbox tab in the Toolspace window. This concludes this video discussing the Toolspace Toolbox tab. In this video, we will discuss the Properties palette in Civil 3D. If you would like to follow along with this video, please open the file 020propertiespalette.dwg located in the training folder as discussed in the Working with this Dataset video. The Properties palette is an AutoCAD interface component. 
However, civil 3D objects leverage the ability to display available properties depending on the civil 3D object that you select. I've got the properties palette with auto hide turned on. I'm going to turn auto hide off for the purpose of this lecture. So right now I have no object selected, but let's go ahead and quickly select this surface object. Notice that the properties palette updates with the available properties that you can change. One of the key things that you can change very quickly with the properties palette is the style. And this applies to pretty much every single Civil 3D object. So instead of having to go to the actual surface properties themselves through the context sensitive ribbon and then accessing it right here and then clicking OK, you can very easily and quickly access it right through the properties palette. I'll go ahead and change this to a no display property, which will quickly turn it off for me. Let's change it back to the one in five background. I'll zoom in here and select one of the contour labels. Notice how the surface and contour label group properties appear in the properties palette. And I can actually turn on and off different properties of this contour label line. This makes it very convenient to quickly turn the display of let's say minor contours. Let's set this to true. And now I have all my major and minor contour labels displayed. I'll press the escape key on the keyboard to clear my selection set. Again, this works with all Civil 3D objects. Depending on the object that you select, you will be able to change the specific properties based on that object. Notice how right from the properties palette, I can actually tell this Civil 3D alignment to use criteria-based design or use design criteria. Using the AutoCAD properties palette can greatly reduce the amount of time that you change objects' properties. This concludes this video discussing the properties palette. In this video, we will discuss the tool palettes and how they are used in Civil 3D. If you would like to follow along with this video, please open the file 0208toolpalettes.dwg located in the training folder as discussed in the Working with this Dataset video. The tool palettes is an AutoCAD interface component, and Civil 3D leverages the tool palettes to add subassemblies for corridor modeling. If you accidentally close the tool palettes, you can simply open them again by navigating to the View tab on the ribbon, Palettes Panel, and Tool Palettes button right here. You can also press Control 3 to access them as well. I will turn Auto Hide off and keep this docked for purposes of this video. So, as I mentioned before, tool palettes are used to hold the subassemblies for all your corridor modeling. They're stored in categories such as basic subassemblies. Lane subassemblies, shoulders, medians, curbs, daylight, generic subassemblies, conditional subassemblies, and if you require additional ones, click on the extra tabs location down below here and you will notice the available palettes. There's also an assemblies palette, which is very useful if you need to save completed roadway assemblies. Simply select the predefined assembly to place them in the drawing. And just like that, I now have an assembly with a default set of subassemblies applied. We will discuss later on how to manipulate and add specific subassemblies. Should you require to access the default AutoCAD tool palettes or your own tool palettes, simply right click up here and you will have access to the default AutoCAD palettes. If you have your own palettes that you've used in the past from prior versions of AutoCAD or AutoCAD Civil 3D, Simply go to the Customize Palettes option and you can import your palettes by right clicking anywhere along here and selecting the Import option from the shortcut menu. This concludes this video on discussing the tool palettes. In this video, we will be discussing the Transparent Commands toolbar in Civil 3D. If you would like to follow along with this video, Please open the file 0209transparentcommands.dwg located in the training folder as discussed in the Working with this Dataset video. So what are transparent commands? Transparent commands are commands that enable you to access your design objects while using either standard AutoCAD commands or Civil 3D commands. To access the transparent commands toolbar, navigate to the View tab, User Interface Panel, Toolbars, Civil Category, and Transparent Commands. This is a toolbar so that these tools are not in the Ribbon tab interface. I'll go ahead and leave mine up here for the 
purposes of this video. So if you look at the transparent commands toolbar, you will notice that it is categorized. We have angular type transparent commands like angle distance, bearing distance, and so on. You have northing and easting type transparent commands or point commands for locating points in the drawing. You have alignment commands for locating the station and offset of an alignment. You have profile transparent commands that allow you to easily create profiles using some of the profile transparent commands like distance grade, profile grade station, and so on. And lastly, we have the match radius and match length and so on commands which will match existing AutoCAD or Civil 3D objects and apply them to proposed objects. So how do you use transparent commands? Let's say, for example, I would like to create a polyline and I want to use the alignment to define station and offset values to create this polyline. First, I will start the polyline command. And the way that the transparent commands work is they work while you're in the middle of a command. So now I will access the station offset transparent command. Note that you can also type in apostrophe SO to quickly access the station offset transparent command. Notice the prompts. It says SO and then you have these two greater than symbols that say select alignment. When you see those two greater than symbols you know that you are still in the transparent command. Those are visual cues that tell you that. I'll select my alignment and then it says specify station along alignment. Notice how you get this alignment jig that allows me to snap to existing AutoCAD objects if I so desire. In this case, I want to type in my stationing. I'll type in 110, enter. Notice how the jig locks into the 110 station value. And now you are prompted to define an offset. If you would like to go left of the alignment, start the value with a negative number. If you want to go right of the alignment, start the value with a positive number. I want to type in negative 45 and there's my first point. The line has not appeared yet because I only have one point created. But notice that there is a little plus sign signifying that I have started the polyline command. Let's go ahead and keep going here. Again, notice the two greater than symbols that tell me I am in the middle of a transparent command. I'll type in 2 plus a pair or 200 and then type in my offset of negative 52.5. Enter. And notice how my polyline is beginning to draft. If let's say that was it for using the transparent commands along with the polyline command, I could simply press escape once on the keyboard. That puts me back into the polyline command and I can continue drafting. If I so desire to use one of the transparent commands, I can simply access them through the transparent commands toolbar or type in the shortcut key associated to it, in this case, apostrophe SO. I'll now type in my alignment. Notice how AutoCAD Civil 3D automatically knows the last alignment that you selected. And then I'll type in my value for the offset. Let's say I wanted to draw this polyline across the road. I'll enter 5 plus 0, 0. And then I'll just type in a positive value of what I typed in before. And notice how the command continues all the way across the road. So this command is very useful for designing many standard AutoCAD objects as well as using it for Civil 3D object design. I'll press escape to resume my polyline command. If let's say I'm done, I can press escape to end the command. That is a standard procedure for using transparent commands. This concludes this video discussing the transparent commands. In this video, we will discuss the panorama window. If you would like to follow along with this video, please open the file 0210 the panorama window .dwg. The panorama window is an interface that can display many types of data. It is a floating dockable window that you can keep open as you work. It can include several tables called vistas on different tabs. The panorama data shown in black text can be edited and the data shown in the gray text cannot be edited. To conserve screen space, if more than one vista is active, the panorama window displays a tab for each one of the vistas. When you are editing some Civil 3D information, it will automatically open the panorama window. For instance, I'm going to zoom into this alignment. I'm going to select it and choose the geometry editor from the contextual ribbon tab. In the Alignment Layout Tools, I have the Alignment Grid View Editor. 
And when I click on that, notice the panorama window appears. There's a vista now that says Alignment Entities, and I can go through here and change any of the values that are not grayed out. If I select a point, or a combination of points for that matter, so let's go ahead and select a few points here. I'll use the Koga Points Contextual tab to select the Edit List Points command, and that will also open up the panorama window, and it will contain a point editor. This will allow me to edit any of the properties of this point. Once I make my edits, I would simply hit Enter on the keyboard, and then to close any of the vistas, you simply select this checkbox here. In addition to alignment properties and point properties and just civil 3D properties in general, there's also an event viewer that appears when you do things such as surface modeling or corridor modeling, and any mistakes or errors that occur will appear in the event viewer vista. One thing to mention, I would not recommend you close the panorama window because you will use it quite a bit. Simply find a comfy spot for it and leave it there, and then when you edit objects, you can then access it as it uses palette functionality. If you are lucky to have two screens, perhaps move the panorama window to your second monitor and leave it with auto hide off. That way you can see any of the property vistas appear automatically. Should you close the panorama window and you would like to open it up again, you can access it from the View tab, Palettes panel, in the More Tools option, and then here is the Event Viewer, which will open up the panorama window. This concludes this video discussing the panorama window.